Dino and Dr. Rick Watts, and we're here with a couple guests, and you're going to love to be good, good to see you. Good to see you, Rick. Gary Christopher. <laughs> from yeah. Ezra. Welcome to the interview. I'm Dr. Rick Wodge, and it's great to have you on the show. Uh, thank you for all the support you give to the network. Uh, we've seen such an increase around the world of people that are interested in seeing the interviews and getting digging into their their Bibles in a in a more in depth way. And we so love and appreciate you. On today's show, we have a very interesting guest. You're going to love her like we do. It's Hannah Salisbury, and she is the founder and executive director of Bibles in Schools, and that's biblesinschools.org. Hannah, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on today. Uh, what in the, You're very welcome. What in the world are you doing, Bibles in Schools? I thought Bibles were banned in schools. I know that's what's great is because so many people think that too, but we actually, we donate engaging Bibles to public school libraries. And yes, it is legal to have uh, Bibles in our public school libraries in the United States. And so how big has this become and when did you start this? Yes. So I was a, a teacher in Virginia and in 2018, I just really needed God's help to be present where I was. So I started to prayer walk around my school. I would get to school early, pray for the teachers I worked with. I would pray for the students and pray for the bus drivers, just everybody at our school that they, you know, come to know who Jesus was, is. And um, one day in particular, I was listening to the song, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come flood this place, this atmosphere. Sure. And I usually... I, I literally used that song to pray that Jesus's name would just be mentioned all in the classrooms and hallways of our public school. And God took that prayer and really uh, spread it bigger than I could have ever imagined because he opened my eyes to my second grade student who didn't like to read. He uh, checked out an old King James Version Bible from the library. And he's second grader, you know, and sometimes that's a hard version to read even for adults. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, he was so excited to read the definitions of heaven, hell, and God. And uh, I asked him, I said, where did you get that from? And he said he got it from our library. So I went home that night and I thought, okay, if he, a boy who doesn't like to read, is excited to read the Bible, what if we had a Bible that had pictures, was more on his reading level. And so that's when I got, um, it's called the Action Storybook Bible. Mm -hmm. And it it's kind of resembles like a graphic novel, has, you know, kind of like a comic book. I donated it to our library. She accepted it. And um, I, I saw the impact um, when the students were checking out this Bible from our school. Uh, the first student who checked it out, he got so excited when he read that God created the ground. He started telling his friends, he told his teacher, and he went home and told his mom about God. And so I realized the ripple that one Bible had in our school and knew how to keep going. So 2019, year later, uh, launched the nonprofit Bibles in Schools. That's amazing. Now, are you getting a lot of resistance or a lot of people saying, yeah, keep going, girl? Yes, we do get a lot of resistance, uh, but we have donated to over 2,800 public school libraries in the United States. Wow, that is incredible. Really, in five years? Yes. Well, we're getting ready to go on four years that uh, since launching our- Oh, because you started in 2018 or right, 2019, actually. 2019. Yeah, 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 right. Right. right, right. Got it. Well, that's- 2,800. That's, that's huge. Yes. Now, is it primarily in the States toward Virginia or is it moved out West? It, it, we are, we have donated to all of the States, 49 States. 
uh, schools in all four United States. We just we need Massachusetts. So um, uh, and then we need a lot more schools. We have a, a, there there are a lot of schools in the United States. So uh, there are many schools that we have not even touched. But the stories that we're hearing are what is so encouraging. Uh, okay, so you know we have a lot of time to go through this, but already I want people to know what they can do to help, where they can go to find out more information. Yes, yeah, so go to biblesinschools.org, and then you can email us and or call us or text us to see if we donated Bibles to your school district. Uh, if we haven't, we will help you and. Um, going through the process of trying to get them into your school libraries. So biblesinschools.org. Biblesinschools.org. Excellent. So other religious books, are they allowed in public schools or not? Yes, they are allowed in public school libraries. And so do the teachers, are they able to promote this or not? You know, it, to promote it um, by like, if you were to just promote the Bible over other religious um, texts, you, you can't do that, but you can, you can put the Bible on your shelf um, at your library, you know, on your, uh, in your library. Um, you can have it in your school classroom library. The Bible is so unique. It's, it's different from all of the other religious texts because the United States of America, we were founded on biblical principles. And so the Bible is part of our history. So it's important that we have the Bible in our school libraries. And you know what? It, through this, um, this is totally a God God movement. I would have never thought of this. But as I continued to research, it was the same. Most of our school libraries um they don't ha even have a copy of the Bible in their library. And a lot of libraries have over like 12,000 copies of books. Um, and if we, if they do have a Bible, it's old, it's outdated. There's not a lot of Christian literature in our school libraries. And every state has academic standards that relate to the Bible. So um, we need to have the Bible in our library for our students to have access to further their education of what they're already learning in the classroom. Yeah, if Judeo-Christian values are the reason that America has ethics, then why wouldn't you use the source of where those ethics originated? It only makes sense. And right. so can you imagine the lives that are being changed because God used you? I bet you never thought in a million years that this is what you'd be doing. It, it's crazy because I was praying for my school, for my staff, for my students. But now this prayer is literally getting into schools across our country because we're getting we're getting emails from librarians say they have waiting lists. An or a library in Oregon has a waiting list of 15 students waiting to check out the action Bibles. And wow. if they're if they're having waiting lists, that means that the kids are talking all about it, about how they like reading it, because more kids want to check it out. That so, is that's amazing. Yes. It, it so, really is. I mean that's amazing. 15 people already in just one school, they want to yes. check it out. Yes. And, you know, we think so much. We're like, oh, we can't have the Bible in our school or um, we can't. Students have a lot of rights in public schools and, and they can share about their faith openly. They can carry a Bible to school and to check out Bibles from the schools is just an awesome opportunity for you know, you're just carrying this through the school and, and, and it's, it's a great way to share Jesus's love. Now, I'm, I'm really curious as to, do you go to churches and speak about this? Do you, what do you do? I do. You know, the more that we can get the word out about what God is doing through Bibles and schools and to spread the need. I think, you know, as every church, almost every church I go to, they'll say, I didn't know we could have Bibles in our schools. Right. And so if we can, we just need to get the right. word out that, hey, this is the way to have the Bibles in our schools. Um, 
And so, yes, going to churches and events to share about Bibles and schools, to get the word out, but also to get people behind this and to get involved. Hannah, I guess, and I'm sure that you watch the news and you see what's going on in America. You see what's going on around the world. Is it surprising that we aren't using the Bible as much as we should be in public institutions that parallels perfectly what's going on with the immorality in the world, the lack of justice in the world? I mean, it seems to me it's exactly what's going on, and that's probably one of the largest reasons is that we've removed the Bible. We've removed just the Ten Commandments from most of the courtrooms. and. So therefore, what do we base our ethics on? What's our morality based on if we don't have a standard? So right. what do you think about that? What about the what you see in the news today in America? Right. Well, you know, in the 1960s is when they took the teaching of the Bible devotionally out of our school libraries and prayer um prayer led in our schools. And when they took that out of our schools, we can see the decline of our, our nation. And we can also, you know, sometimes it's very frustrating. We'll spend hours emailing, calling, and we don't get responses or we get declines or there's district policies that say they don't accept religious books. And it gets you upset. But you know what? When we've taken the, when it's been um, since the 1960s, we can't expect people who don't know God, who don't follow God to just openly accept our Bible donation. And that is why it's so important as Christians. We now see this need. Um, you, you, you hear all about now all the bad books that are in our public school libraries. Well, this is a way that we can knock on our school schools and, and go to our school librarians and say, hey, we want this in our schools. We want our students to be able to check this out because it's important. And if they it, don't know that people want it, then why would they put it on their shelf? Exactly. Great point. And what about parents getting involved and in knowing what's going on in the school and being aware of what's being pushed from their libraries in the schools? Shouldn't they be involved? Yes. And there are um, there is a website that you can actually check your your child's school library and you could type in their Bible and see what they have in their library. Um, most of the times it, it is up to date. And that's just a good way to set to see what's in the library. Also, just go and meet your librarian and, and ask to see the section of Christian literature. And you will be shocked when you go and see um, the section will probably be this small. Oh, my goodness. You know, it, really? I, I'm not saying that's for every library, but go and check. I just I, that's what I would urge you to do is go and see about your local public school library. And once you see it, once you see a need, you know, then you want to do something about it. Okay, so you just opened up a can of worms for me and my thinking, and that is, okay, if it's such a small section, what about counter-religions? Do they also have sections, and how large are those? You know, good question. I I can just speak from the libraries that I have seen, and I would say the religious section, no matter what religion, it's small. It It, it is small. But then you think about there are a lot of books that might not be in the religious section, but that they have information about other religions in the in the books. So what about evolution? Right. I, have a feeling, <laughs> I have a feeling that evolution is going to be a large section and it's going to permeate most of the classroom materials. And so, you know, our dear friends at ICR, Institute for Creation Research, you know, I know that they're doing their best to get also their books in to show that creationism is also just as valid for students to be able to take a look at and make it their own decision about. Yes, that's a good point because, you know, evolution is being taught in our public schools. And so, um, and yes, there are textbooks. So it would be interesting to, to compare those sections. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've got to make a difference. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I feel like 
you know, I was born in the 60s. So I'm a little bit older than you. In fact, I'm a lot older than you. But what I've seen is, is that this generation is kind of the change generation, no matter how old you are. We're in this together at this point in time. And there's so much going on in the world, this cataclysmic uh, set of events politically and um, with all the possibilities of a major world war possibly taking place. China's a player. Russia's a player. Uh, all the things going on in the Ukraine right now, earthquakes, all the problems like Matthew 24, right before our eyes. I'm thinking we have got to use this opportunity right now to make a difference. And what you're doing is key because if we don't raise up these kids with an understanding that God loves them, God has a plan for their lives, you know, what are we going to become? So I think what you're doing is so critical right now for people to get involved with. And so give the website again. Let's hear how they can get involved. I'm sure that you could probably use some funds behind this. So let's talk about it. Yes, BiblesInSchools.org. And you're right. The time is now. You know, we're having a difficult time getting Bibles in our school libraries in a country where we have freedom of religion. Yes. Yes. So what about the other countries? Did you just freeze on me? I think you did. Let me throw my hand in the air. Let's see if you come back. To talk about Jesus, so while okay, we can, so have... you just froze. Okay, so... I, I saw that I froze. Okay, good. I wasn't that's sure. all right. I just kept talking. That's, that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix the coloring too. I'm seeing the coloring being way off, but I'm going to fix both. So okay, don't even worry about. It. We can do all that in post. Okay, so I'm going to reset the time for 11 minutes. Okay, and I already knew that I was going to have to fix that. And so the last thing was you um, said was about the time is now. Was it Bible? Yeah, the time is now. Let's pick it up from there. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna start it and go ahead. Okay. The time the time really is now to get Bibles in our public school libraries. Because if you think about it, we're already having a difficult time getting Bibles into schools where our country has freedom of religion. It's totally legal to put Bibles in school libraries. So there might come a time when they say we can't have Bibles at all in school libraries. Students can't bring their Bible to school. Students can't say the name of Jesus. Like we're seeing this happen. Um, we're seeing this right now. There was a district in uh, South Carolina. They accepted book donations, religious book donations for the middle and high school, but they won't accept them for the elementary schools. So um, this if they're not going to accept Christian Bibles, book donations, then are are the libraries, are librarians going to use our tax uh, money to get religious books? Probably not. And so we need to, as, as parents and people in those communities, we need to be knocking on the doors saying we want this in our school libraries. Um, the exciting thing is that the Bible is living and active. And when my student started reading that God created the ground, he started telling everybody. And, you know, we just had another story in Pennsylvania. They told us, the librarian told us that uh, she couldn't keep the Bibles on her shelf. And she had a student come up to her and say, hey, I finished reading the NIV Action Study Bible, which is the whole Bible. And, um, well, he didn't finish reading, but he liked it so much. He wanted another uh, like another uh, type of the action Bible. And he told the librarian that he's been reading three chapters a night with his mom and his siblings. So this is what Bibles and Schools is doing, is that we're getting Bibles not only on the library shelves, students are talking about in their schools, they're taking it home and families are reading three chapters a night of the Bible like I know with my student who checked out the first action storybook Bible, they did not believe in God. So a Bible probably would never be in their home. But because it was available at their school, he wanted to check it out. And that is what the stories that we're hearing. And, and we're hearing we're hearing librarians say, you know what? We didn't have any. One librarian told us they had a Bible from the 1950s. Oh, boy. Um they had students asking for Bibles. 
And then they got a phone call from us. And that is God. And that's God working in the lives of students curious to know about the Bible and about God. And it really has to be in the modern vernacular. Because when you're reading a Bible, especially a kid from 1950s, it's going to seem so foreign and so strange, like a, almost like a, a completely different language. So having a Bible like the NIV or something similar that kids can read and with pictures because it's such a graphic generation now. Right. Graphic world. Everything is graphic today. Right. That it's it's essential. So what you're doing is is so important. Proverbs says, and I know you can quote it, train up a child or raise up a child in the way they will go and you shall not depart from it. Exactly right. And so if we raise up kids with morals and a sense of ethics and that it's a theocentric uh, world, God-centered world, uh, they're going to think that God is, they're going to know that God is the one in charge of all things and we need to respect him. We need to obey him and we need to treat others with the same type of respect. Right. And so without that, we're in a world that's chaotic, which right. we're seeing because the countries are trying to do their own thing without God. Right. Right. And that's that's why it is so important to um, I can speak personally for the school that I used to teach at when we got that Bible in our school. Just uh, praying that, God, this is your school. This is this is not anybody else. This is your school. We want the word of God to be in our school. We want students. Um, you know, God used those prayers that I was praying when I was walking around that school. And um, he cares. He cares. He cares for he cares for our, our kids. And if, if we don't do something about it, if we don't train them up and teach them the word of God um, or provide it. Um, many you, we live in America. Yes, we could go buy a Bible if we wanted to. But, you know, many people in America have never read the Bible or have never opened it. and. Um, so that's why we exist, to, to give students that opportunity to check them out. And you know, that couldn't be more biblical. In the first century society, in that culture uh, that formed, that birthed the New Testament text, you know, mothers were praying with their children every night. And those prayers came out of the Bible. And, and then they would teach them to memorize sections of, of the Bible itself. And so th this is how they grew up in the first, this is the context of the world that Jesus grew up in. And mm -hmm. so when we're not doing that, we're depriving our kids of the, of the biblical education and training of when they're so young that they'll base the rest of their life on. Right. So this is essential for people. Right. To get, look, I, I'm just going to talk to you as a viewer now uh, you know, let's get behind this thing. Biblesinschools.org. Go there. Find out how you can help. Find out what you can do to donate to help this cause because America needs God. And that means we need to start off with our kids. Yes. And we make these, uh, we donate these Bibles for free to these librarians because we we know we know the importance and we want them to have it. Um, and not have to worry about using their funds to pay for it. So we just thank y'all. We thank everyone who's given and who will continue to give to be behind Bibles in schools. Yeah, and Hannah, thank you so much for what you're doing. You know, it's it's a it's a good lesson for us in that you don't realize as just normal people, we don't realize how God is going to use us in areas that we probably never guessed. Right. All we have to do is say yes. Just say right. yes. Right. Uh, people have talked to me because I'm, you know, I I, I try to teach from the first century uh, perspective in pretty much in all that I do, even in interviews. And often they'll they'll say, well, if you still believe that all of God's word is intact today, then isn't that about works? It's, no, it's not about works at all. Our relationship with God is based really on faith, but also one thing that we're responsible for, to say yes. That's mm -hmm. it. Say yes. God will do the rest. He'll show you what to do, even if it's becoming like Hannah 
and passing out Bibles in schools. I mean, it's it's really amazing that libraries now are starting to contain a newer version of the Bible that kids can actually understand. And that's because Hannah said yes. Pretty amazing, Hannah. That's right. And you know, um, before I said yes, I don't even think I would have realized the importance of my student checking out a Bible if I had not prayer walked. So mm. I would say, you know, you, I, I, I was crying out to God for help in my own personal life. That's why I started to prayer walk around the school I taught at. But that is what opened my eyes to the need. And um, yes, I, I have continually said yes to what God has called me to. And I do. Um, I see the need. And I know that many lives, um, a lot, we will never hear the stories. But when we get to heaven, you know, God will be like, you, you know, to all the viewers, thank you for giving to Bibles and schools. Your gift helped put a hand into someone's um uh, uh, a student's hand and they took it home and, and they got saved. They, they got, became a Christian because of that Bible that was in that school. And I do believe there will be many, many stories um, because of these Bible donations. I believe that too. And one of the, probably one of the most famous responses in the Bible is here I am, Lord, use me. Right. And that means anybody. So if you're watching this show from wherever you are, because it goes around the world, wherever you are, God can use you in a mighty way greater than he's using Hannah or me. Right. He can use you in such a way to change generations of people. God believes in you. Even if you don't believe in yourself, God believes in you. And there isn't anything God can't do through you. Here I am, Lord, use me. Just say yes, God will use you. Hannah, thank you so much for being on the show, and uh, we're going to be praying for you. We're we're glad we've started a relationship with you and the wonderful yeah. thing that you're doing. Thank you so much. God bless you, and thank you for watching the show this week, and uh, we just pray for you, pray that God's peace will be on you and in you through this chaotic world, and that remember, Messiah is coming. You can make a difference in this world. Keep praying, have hope, keep your faith. We'll see you next time. Welcome to the interview. I'm Dr. Rick Watts. I'm here with a couple of guests. You're going to love to be doing Good to see you. Good to see you, Rick. Gary Christopher. <laughs> From Ebersdraw. Yeah. Uh,